I'm here with Cassie. Uh, Cassie's um, been looking at a building similar to the one we're actually excavating here in... Uh, well, it's just outside the visors in Hampshire. Okay. Yep. And, and so. what was it? What did it look like and uh, what was inside it? Uh, well, it's it's pretty much lifted on a cart hole from the site, just exactly like, oh, whoa, thanks, Phil. Exactly like the one we've got here. And it, oh yeah, a lot of that, basically. Asbestos? Yep, lots of asbestos. Um, because, I mean, they're basically just galvanised zinc sheds. Yes. So the only thing that gives you any protection against the cold is the, um, the boarding out. And the ones I saw in Wiltshire have this inside and the corrugated on the outside, just to give it a bit of insulation. And what's amazing is we're beginning to find material. I thought it might have all been cleared away and all be in pits. And we've got pieces of glass, glass stoppers, rather beautiful glass stopper there. Presumably from the kind of things they'd have been using in, the, in, the, in this hut. I mean, I, items of uh, plates, saucers maybe. And that's got a, some writing on. Yep. I wonder what one. SA, I think it's brain fear. So what gets you going about these sites? Because you seem to oh. like these sorts of things. I like them because they're the temporary interim structure, if you like. We're used to seeing things that are nice and solid, made of stone and brick and everything. But most things have a temporary phase. And when you finally get to excavate sheds, what you're doing is you're excavating necessity and immediacy and how you deal with um, crisis, if you like. And you very rarely get that little window. You get a nice, sensible, settled bit. So this little picture of urgency is something you get when you look at tented site and, camp and um, cabined sites, hutted sites. And you find that? Oh, I find it unusual. It's a nice human picture that you don't necessarily get from completed military, military installations or from military histories. They look very different. Just like a temporary encampment from, you know, 19... 15, 16, whenever it was. Well, I think this one, there's an earlier tented camp from about the turn of the century, but 14, 15 is when the huts start going up. Right. So very immediate, as soon as the outbreak of war happens, they're aware they're going to need to change how they do machine gunning, effectively, then this place springs up. And it's hard to imagine these sort of empty fields and there would have been 15,000 people yep. in huts. And this is the place, we've just seen an amazing photograph with a guy playing a piano and another guy sitting at a bar looking kind of bored, actually from this building. Um, you know, it's amazing to have those photographs. Yeah. And it's practice, because you watch it develop in these places, because people don't know how to be a machine gun battalion and all these things. So it all gets worked out on the ground, and the only way you find it is looking at wooden huts full of beer bottles. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nice. Lovely place. And this is where they'd have drunk the beer and had the sing-songs. Wasn't this the YMCA? Yeah.